Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about completing the square. Towards the end of the video, there are some examples and answers you can try yourself. But once I've finished my examples, I've also put in an extra wee bit that talks about why we actually do completing the square. So that bit's optional. You might have already been talked to about this before or you might not have. So that's why I've put it at the end. So completing the square, we're going to be able to rearrange a quadratic expression into a different form today that looks a bit like this, a bracket squared plus a number. Um, the bit about writing a turning point, that might or might not be part of what your lesson intention is. That's the bit that's mentioned at the end. But basically, the reason we complete the square is it really helps us write down the turning point of a quadratic. So where that's the coordinate of where that smiley or sad face shape starts to turn. But that might mean absolutely nothing to you just now, depending on the order you've been taught in. So out completing the square is a process of turning this first equation here into um, this second equation. So the process of turning that into that. Now I use A, B, C in my examples. Sometimes um, a, a question will use um, P, Q's and R's and this A part right now at National 5 is not important. When you come on to do higher that there starts to be a number in front of there. So we're just looking at the B and the C part just now. Okay. Okay so if we look at the quadratic up the top x squared plus ax plus 16 is called your quadratic. When you factorise that, that goes into the two brackets shown, x plus 4, x plus 4, because 4 and 4 multiply to 16, 4 and 4 add to 8. And then a shorter way of writing that is because it's a repeated bracket, you write the power 2 outside. So it's squared. Anything times itself is squared. We know this. So in the first trinomial form, it's a quadratic. The answer I've got at the end is the square. So we have completed the square on that trinomial. Now, if you look at that trinomial compared to my first example, it looks very similar, but the only difference is I've got a plus 17 on the end. So I knew that this was the same as x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus an extra 1. We have a shortened way of writing that above as x plus 4 all squared with a plus 1 on the end. So that's the square completed on that one. That's the answer. Bear in mind, at this point, though, I'm not actually showing you the method yet. This is not going to be possible for every single quadratic we do because not everyone's going to be like one away from the perfect square number. So I'm going to show you another one doing this. So if you were to factorise this one here, that would give us 7 and 7 make 49. So minus 7 and minus 7 make minus 14. So we would write that one as x take away 7 all squared. Now if you look at that question in number 2 and my question in number 3, you'll see that they look very, very similar, only my 49 has changed to a 48. So that one is one less than the one before. So I'm going to write that as x take away 7 all squared take away 1. Now, that, this isn't, as I said, this isn't going to be possible for every single quadratic, but I'm just trying to show you where this, this middle term comes from. Now, there is a shorter way of getting there. When you do 7 squared, do you agree that that's 49? Yeah? And do you agree that minus 49 plus 48 gives you that negative one that's on the outside? Yeah? So what we're going to do, and when I, I'm going to tell you the steps in the next slide um, really, really shorthand to just try and get the, the method in. When you multiply out that double bracket, you get a plus 49. So I turn that into a minus 49. Then I stick on the number at the end that was in the question, which is a plus 48, and they tidy up to give me the minus 1 that's there. So let's see this in action. I'm going to write this down into simple steps, what I'm doing though. So the steps that I use are, whatever the middle term is, we half it. So we half the coefficient of x, that is the middle term. And then you square the number that you put in the bracket and you subtract it. Now, if you don't know what coefficient is, it's the number that goes in front of the x. So we have the number in front of the middle term. We put that in the bracket and then whatever number you used, we square it and take it away. So for example, for this trinomial here, I've got x squared plus 6x. You half that middle number, which was your 3 x which became 3. So you do x plus 3 in the bracket. These signs match up. Whatever you had goes in the bracket. And then 3 squared is 9. 
So you take away 9. Now the reason we're taking away the 9 is if you square out x plus 3x plus 3. That gives you x squared plus 6x plus 9. But that does not match up with what we started with. What I have to do to make that match my initial question is I have to take away 9. So that is why I am taking away the 3 squared to counteract this plus 9 when you get when you multiply it out. And if you square any pair of brackets, whether it's plus 3, plus 3 or minus 3, minus 3 that's in them, that's going to give you a positive term. So we always have to take away what that would have been. Right, let's go on to some real examples. Following the steps. So here we go. This might be the bit you might want to start copying down and following. So step one was turn that x squared into an x. Half the four is a two. So it's x take away two all squared. That's the first step, okay? Half the middle number, put that in your bracket. Then you look at whatever this number here is. So that's negative 2. Negative 2 squared equals 4. So you stick on a takeaway 4. And then whatever was already there, which is a plus 10, you have to put that down as well. So that's what you end up with. That's the first step of completing the square. Then you tidy that up. So that gives you x minus 2 all squared Negative 4 plus 10 is plus 6. That's your completed the square. That's your written it in the other form. Let's do the same with the second one. Right, let's try this one. So following the steps, we start with our open bracket. You do x. It's a plus sign. Half of 8 is 4. So your first step is x plus 4 all squared. You then square that number. 4 squared is 16. You take that away. Remember, it's always take away whatever you've put in there squared. So it's take away 16 and then you stick on your add-on to at the end. Then we can tidy that up. So that gives you x plus 4 all squared. Be careful, this is where a lot of people make really silly mistakes. Minus 16 plus 2 is minus 14. That's us completed the square. Okay, a couple more. You might want to pause the video, try these two for yourself and see if you understand it. If not, just keep following it just now. I'm, I'm going to do a couple more. So, step one, half the middle number. So, half of six is three. It's a plus there, so x plus three all squared. Three squared is nine, so you subtract nine. Don't forget to add on the plus four. That gives you x plus three all squared. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. Done. Second one. Half of 12 is 6. So it's x take away 6, all squared. 6 squared is 36. So take away 36. Add on your 15. So that gives us negative 36 plus 15 is negative 21. Okay. So as I mentioned, you might want to just stop the video there or go try the examples that I've got at the end. Or you might want to understand a wee bit more about why we're actually doing this, okay? So when we've got a quadratic, this one here, if you look at the first one, is your most basic graph of x squared. When we move that up the way, a number gets added on and it becomes with a wee plus c on it. When it moves to the right, it becomes a minus b. Now you've started to see brackets that look a bit like that when you've been completing the square. So when it moves to the right, it's got a minus b. When it moves to the left, so if I'd moved over that way, that would have been an x plus b all squared. Now that's kind of the opposite of what you think. Okay, so if it's moved in the positive direction, a minus goes in the bracket. When it moves in the negative direction, a positive goes in the bracket. And then you've got this final one here, which basically encompasses everything. It's your basic quadratic. It's been moved to the left, so it's got a positive in here. And it's been moved down, so it's got a negative number here. Now, see whatever these numbers are that are in your equation. That's going to give you the coordinate of this thing here, which is called your turning point. Now, just to be reminded that the left to right movement is always the opposite of what you think. So, 
when we've completed the square, this is what you have been doing on the previous examples. When you do that, the B value is really your X coordinate and the bit on the end is your Y coordinate, giving you this thing here. So the numbers that are in the bracket and at the end are actually a coordinate of your turning point. But the thing to be aware is just remember that B is technically the opposite sign of in the bracket. So if it says plus two in the bracket, that becomes minus two for the first half of your coordinate. And then sometimes it asks about this thing called an equation of the line of symmetry. And that's just x equals whatever your b value is. So let me show you this in action. So here are three that I've already had, they've already been written and completed the square form. All right. Now, the first one here says plus four in the bracket. So your turning point is the opposite of that. The opposite of plus four is minus four. Plus one means it's been moved up one. Sorry, I shouldn't have to write the plus in there. So it means it's moved up one. So that is your turning point. Okay. The second one says minus two in the bracket. So that means that becomes positive two when we move it to the right. Minus five means it's gone down five. So that's two negative five for your turning point. On the last one here, the plus one, you do the opposite. So that turning point is at negative one. And then it's gone up seven, so negative one, seven. So that's me dealt with the turning point part. The nature is asking, is it a smiley face or is it a sad face? Is it a maximum or a minimum turning point? So the nature of each of these ones ba are based on whether it's a positive or negative x squared. The first one is gives you a positive x squared when you multiply out your bracket. So this is a minimum turning point. I'm just going to write min for short. So that's got a minimum turning point. The second one is also going to give you positive x squared and you multiply it out. So that is also a minimum turning point. And the third one, you never actually have to complete the square on ones with negatives. But you do have to maybe sometimes write down the turning points and nature of ones with negatives. Notice this little negative here. So when I multiply my brackets, it will give me x squared, but there'll be a negative in front. So that means that that one is a sad face which is a maximum turning point. So there are your turning points in your natures. The line of symmetry bit is just x equals whatever your x coordinate is. So your line of symmetry here, I'm going to write LOS for short, is x equals minus 4. On this one, it's x equals 2. And on the last one, it's x equals minus 1. And what that means is you really have a minimum turning point at negative 4, 1. So that would be somewhere over here. And the line of symmetry goes down through negative 4 on the x-axis. On this one here, you have a minimum turning point at 2, negative 5. So that would be over here somewhere. Uh, and your line of symmetry goes through the, co the co x-coordinate of 2. Now, as I said, again, this wee bit was optional. If you're going to go try the questions, um, it's up to you if you just want to use these as extra completing the square practice. If you want to try putting in the turning point, you can. My answers only include the completing the square part, I'm afraid. I haven't actually got around to putting in all the turning points. So pause, give these a try, and then look at the next slide. So there you go. There's your answers. If you wanted the turning point, I can quickly do a couple for you. That would give you a turning point of the opposite of what's in the bracket, 5. The opposite of what's in the bracket, minus 7. The opposite of what's in the bracket, minus 1, minus 6. And so on. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that helps.